A couple of parishioners shared with me this week an image which they find helpful. As Christians, we are to be human bridges, they said. As we participate in our society, we are to accompany others, earn their trust, befriend them, and in time, enable them to join us in the family of the church. This powerful image came out of an online presentation, a webinar, that they took part in on behalf of our parish last week. The presentation was given by two leading contemporary English-speaking authorities on parish renewal, Sherry Woodell and Father James Mallon. Human bridges. The image makes sense. Thousands of people in South Bradford have a loose connection with our parish. Perhaps their grandmothers used to attend church. Occasionally, they want to reconnect for a baptism, perhaps, or for the First Holy Communion of a child, but then they want to leg it immediately afterwards. They just don't feel comfortable. Sometimes I celebrate funerals and the whole church, or these days a whole area, is full of Catholics, relatives and friends of the deceased, all of whom are socially distancing themselves from the church, many of whom can't remember the Our Father. It's striking. We have suffered an epidemic of faith loss. Other people, without a historical connection with the church, are nevertheless fascinated by what we do, but are understandably deterred by engaging with the life of the parish because of their lack of knowledge of the faith. One lady shyly approached the chaplaincy administrator at Leeds Trinity University, where I used to work, and asked, I've been meaning to ask this question for ages. The blessed sacrament that people talk about, is it, well, very big? Nobody wants to feel foolish. So what people need is a human bridge, somebody who can be available to introduce them to the Catholic faith. A good analogy is cooking. A lot of us have been doing more of that recently. I've been watching a few YouTube videos and I've been studying recipes on the BBC website, but it's all been a bit stressful. I spilt gravy on the iPad the other evening. What I need is a person in the kitchen who prepares the food and then encourages me to assist, learning on the job, as it were. My friend Father Franco, who is one of the finest cooks I know, learned everything from his mother in the family kitchen in Puglia. If we apply this to our parish, we need people who others can trust and who can very naturally be champions of the faith. Leave me out, I hear you say, through the internet. I can't, I'm afraid. The first Pope, St Peter, tells us today that we are all in this together. He wrote, as we heard, reverence the Lord in your hearts and always have your answer ready for people who ask you the reason for the hope that you have. We are permanently on standby as witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus. We receive the grace of confirmation precisely so that we might be able to engage in this task. What then is the source of the reluctance that we may feel? It may be that there is something dodgy in our lives. Let's rephrase that. It's definitely the case that there is something dodgy in our lives. We are all sinners. And our knowledge of this may make us feel unequal to acknowledging publicly our faith. The answer to this dilemma is easy. Say an act of contrition, with true sorrow for our sins and a firm purpose of amendment. We can't go to confession at the moment, and then move on. Give me a more difficult one. I don't feel I know Jesus well enough to be able to talk about my relationship with him. That's at the heart of our struggle. When Father Michael was living with me, and have you heard the great news, he's coming back, he wouldn't have felt comfortable saying to me, let me show you how to make an excellent boeuf bourguignon, because frankly, his culinary skills were no more advanced than my own. So in the same way, if we're a kind of coasting Catholic, one who perhaps attends Mass most Sundays, but who never prays privately or reads any good material for personal spiritual growth. Of course we're going to feel a bit out of our depth if someone says to us, what do you like about being a Christian? The answer might well be, don't know really. Yet people, and here's the thing, are looking to have precisely that conversation with 
an ordinary person with whom they can relate. And all they need is a little accompaniment and encouragement, and then they can find their feet. They need, in other words, a human bridge who can help them cross the gulf from the land of unbelief, a very unpleasant place, to the land where people at different stages of faith development are followers of Jesus, the lamb once slain who will never die again, this land that we call the church. And how are each of us then to become better at this task which God, through his church, has entrusted to us? Again, that's an easy one. We just need to pray to the Holy Spirit. It's really neat how the life of the church unfolds through the uh, liturgical seasons. In two weeks' time, we will be celebrating Pentecost. And in anticipation of that great event, our Mass readings are already focusing upon the coming of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, in the Gospel today, tells his apostles that he will ask the Father to send them the Advocate, the Spirit of Truth, who will guide them as they engage in Jesus' mission to the world. And in our first reading, we heard how the Apostles laid their hands on the first Christians in Samaria and they received the Holy Spirit. Just before Christmas, Pope Francis, speaking at a conference in Rome on his encyclical Evangelii Gaudium, urged Christians to pray daily to the Holy Spirit that we might maintain the missionary ardour that makes life a love story with God. He said, I would like to tell you very simply, the joy of the gospel comes from the encounter with Jesus. When we meet the Lord, we are inundated by that love of which he alone is capable. This love transforms our whole life, he continued, and the need to announce it arises spontaneously. It becomes irrepressible. When I read that, I suddenly became aware of why my own desire to share the Christian faith is sometimes lacklustre. It's because I haven't opened myself sufficiently to the love of Jesus. Saint Peter, if you remember, said that we have first to reverence the Lord in our hearts, and only then will we, will, will we be in a position to give an account of our faith. Only then will we truly be able to be missionary disciples the ones that Jesus wants us to be.